Hi guys, welcome back. This is Professor Hank, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about underflow and overflow. What it is, how it can happen, or why it happens, and then I'll give you a programming example. Right? So basically, what overflow and underflow is, is this is something that can happen if you try to assign a number to a variable that's either too big or too small for the data type of that variable. Right? So you recall your different data types in C++, they all have a certain size, how much memory they require or that they take up. And as a limit of that memory or as a function of that memory, the range of numbers that they can actually hold. So for example, a short integer, right? If it's signed, it's two bytes and it can hold anywhere from negative 32,768 to 32,767. If you try to assign a number that's bigger than 32,767, then you're going to get an example of overflow. The number that actually gets stored inside of that variable isn't going to be the number that you assign to it. So if you try to assign 40,000 to a short integer, it's not going to be 40,000 that's actually stored in there, right? It's going to be the bit pattern for a different number. An underflow happens in the opposite situation where you try to assign a number that's too small to that variable for that variable's data type to hold basically, right? So if I try to assign negative 60,000 to a short integer variable, then you're going to end up actually storing a positive number in there. That's an example of underflow. Okay. So that's what happens. That's how you define it. Okay. And this can cause some really hard to find bugs in your code because, you know, you might be skimming through your code and everything looks fine. You got your variables, the math looks right. You know, you did your multiplication fine. But then when you go to display the contents of a variable where you stored the sum of some numbers or the product of some numbers or whatever, um, you're getting the wrong answer. Everything looks fine, but it just, why isn't it, why isn't the number right? I don't, I don't get it. I understand what's going on. So let me bring up my whiteboard and I'll draw you some, uh, a picture here and we'll talk about what's going on in memory. Okay. So that way you'll have a better understanding of what's happening. All right. So let us say that we've got, you know, just to make this easier and so I don't have to keep track of as many bits, I'm going to make up a fantasy um, data type, right? My own, my own data type, right? So we'll call this data type um, foo, okay? And foo is a half byte, right? Now, trivia question for you, what did, what's a half byte? Is there a name for it? Yeah, it's a nibble, right? So, uh, this thing right here, since it's a half byte, it's got four bits. Okay. And so four bits are going to allow us, and we'll make it unsigned to keep it even easier, right? An unsigned foo. So that can store, since it's unsigned, no negative numbers, it can store any number from zero through 15. Why? Because we've got four bits, right? And this is the one's place. This is the two's place, the four's place, and the eight's place. So if all of these were zero, well, then that would be zero, okay? But if all of these were one, eight plus four plus two plus one is 15, right? So that's our range of numbers, okay? So let us say that we created an unsigned foo variable um, and we'll call it F, right? And we assigned F 15. Well, then what's in memory? Right? Now, what's in memory is 1111. Okay, that's the binary number for 15. Now, what if we try to subtract 1 from it? Right? If we try to subtract 1 from it, what's going to happen? Okay. Well, what's going to happen is, or if we try to add 1, excuse me. We're adding 1 to start off with. I'm going to do overflow first to start with that. Overflow. Okay, so what happens if I try to add one to it? Okay, if I want to add one to it, well then here's how it's going to play out, right? So one plus one is two, so we got zero. Carry the one. One plus one is two. We've got zero. Carry the one. Because remember, one zero equals two. 
in binary. So 1, 1 is 2, we so we got 0, carry the 1. And then we've got 1, 1, which is 2, 0, carry the 1. Now here's the thing though, we only have four bits in this data type to be able to store a number. But we've got an extra bit here, an extra one. Where's it going to go? Well, there's no place for it to go, right? I mean, technically speaking, it's not exactly true, but for this per for the purposes of understanding this, it is, right? Without going into more de uh, error detail, there's a, um, there's a carry bit, but that's beyond the scope of this video. But in the data type, there's only four bits. So that extra one is gone. So what do we end up with in F? What's actually stored inside of there? Zero. So if you were to display F, right, what you would see on the screen would be zero. So for our half byte data type here, 15 plus one doesn't equal 16, it equals zero. That's overflow, okay? Now, if we've got zero, let's talk about, um, let us talk about uh, underflow, okay? So if we've got zero, okay, so underflow happens when you try to uh, so add a number or, or, or assign a number to a variable that's too small. So let us say that our unsigned foo had zero in it, and then we tried to subtract one, okay? So the bits are gonna look like this, okay? And we wanna subtract one. Right. Well, in order to do that, we're going to have to do some borrowing, okay? Because um, you can't subtract one from zero. So we have to go and we have to um, grab two from the position to our left, right? So that way we can subtract one and then have one, right? So we have to borrow that from the place on the left, from the position to the left, but it's a zero also, right? So it has to borrow from the position to the left and it has to borrow from the position to the left, okay? And then the position to the left gets to borrow a two for free, essentially, okay? You can think of it that way. Okay, so when we do that, okay, one of the two gets assigned to that position so that the other one can be carried or can be brought forward, I guess you could say, right? So that way it can filter or flow all the way down. So now we've got this set to one, this set to one, this set to one, and this set to two. So similar to how if you tried to do this, right? If this was base 10 and you wanted to subtract one from this, what do you have to do? Well, you'd have to borrow all the way from over here, wouldn't you? This would become zero and then this would become um, nine, and then this would become nine, and then this would become 10, wouldn't it? Okay, so then you subtract the one from there, and then you get your nine, and then nine, nine, right? Same, same kind of idea. Okay, so once that happens, what do we got? Well, two minus one is one, and then just bring down each one of these positions, right? So what are we left with in our bit pattern? One, 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 one. Well, what's one, 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 one in binary? That is 15. So if you were to see out F here, what would you see on the screen? Not negative one, you'd see 15 using our fantasy data type here, our made up data type, right? So if I only have a four bit unsigned integer, zero minus one isn't negative one it's actually 15 because of this wraparound effect, right? Because of this underflow. Another way that this is described is as, you know, a car odometer. So you can imagine if your car odometer had four places and you added one to it, well, what happens, right? You get 10 carry the one, 10, carry the one, 10, carry the one. But there's no other dial here for that number, right? There's no other place. So your car rolls back over and it's brand new, right? You roll over the odometer, it's brand new, right? No. If you could drive backwards, 
right, a mile, then what would happen? Well, you know that this would, you can probably guess that it would roll back to 999, right? So it's a similar kind of idea. Okay, so that's the why. So let's go now and take a look at a programming uh, example, okay? So I've got Visual Studio open up here and we'll use a real data type now, not this made up foo, okay? So we'll use an unsigned um, short integer, okay? And the smallest number that an unsigned short can hold is zero, All right? Oops. So we'll um, print out the contents of S and you'll see that in fact, you know, there's our zero. Okay, so now let's go and subtract one from S and see what we get. Right? Now, if you're not aware of underflow and overflow, if you're not sure about the ranges of the different data types, then you might expect, well, we're gonna see negative one, right? And it's not gonna be the result. Um, well, it's not gonna be anything if I don't actually show you <laughs> the contents of S. Okay. Right? You'd expect negative 1, wouldn't you? But that's not what you see. You see 65, 5, 3, 5, because all of the bits reset back to all 1s, just like with our foo example. Okay, So now that S has got 65, 5, 3, 5 in it, right? and this is an example of underflow. Okay, And what's underflow? Putting a number in a variable that's too small. Let's do overflow, right? because right now, S equals 65, 535, right? So what if we added one? Well, it's like driving the car, you know, with the odometer maxed out another mile, it's gonna roll over. Okay, so what are we gonna see? Again, if you didn't know about this, this is overflow. S is gonna equal zero because it's gonna roll over. There's not enough places for that extra carry that results from the addition. So you're going to see, instead of getting 65, 5, 3, 6, we see 0 again. Okay, so that seems to be pretty straightforward. You know, we have ourselves uh, an example of underflow and overflow. But often what happens is, is you get a, it crops up in unexpected places, right? So you can have a, a defect pop up that's kind of hard to detect or a bug pop up that's hard to detect. More often, it's a result of some kind of arithmetic operation where you do multiplication or maybe you're adding a series of numbers, you know, as part of a running total or something like that, and you just run your variable out of room, essentially. So let me give you an example. So let's create an unsigned short variable, call it T, and we'll assign it 30,000. So 30,000, not a problem, right? T can store that because the valid number range is um, 0 through 65535. And so you can see there's your 30,000, not a problem. right? But then later on in your code, for whatever reason, okay, you decide that you need to um, you know, multiply t and assign it to s. right? So you multiply t times 3. Okay? So what's in t? 30,000. 30,000 times 3 is 90,000, right? So if you see out S, then you would expect to see 90,000, right? Wrong. Right, 90,000 is too big. There's not enough bits in an unsigned int to successfully store 90,000. Now this is still an example of overflow because the number was too big. It just wrapped around, right, all the way to 24,464 so that's, that's a more common um, example of, or more common instance of where the, you could run into problems, right? Okay, so that's everything that I wanted to talk to you about in this video. Let's summarize what we talked about. You know, we talked about, you know, overflow and underflow, what is it, right? Um, Trying to put too big or too small numbers into a variable of a data type that can't hold those numbers. Okay, how does it happen? It happens because there's not enough memory to store that number, essentially, right? You don't have enough bits. Okay, and I went through and gave you an example.
Okay, so that's going to bring this video to a close. If you felt that the video was useful, please consider giving the video a thumbs up. And if you thought that the video sucked, well, then you've got that thumbs down button as an option as well. If you'd like to see more videos, if you're interested in more content from the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button. And as usual, if you're a student of mine and you have further questions, feel free to drop me an email or to stop by my office hours. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.